All right, good morning gamers. Uh, this is Aaron from ACM Cyber at UC San Diego. This is a walkthrough of the Educational Challenge Hacks Lab for SDCTF 2022. Uh, this challenge is actually originally from SDCTF 2021, which is why it's available here on the public 2021 repo as a pwn challenge. Uh, but this is being used as an educational challenge for the jail category this year. These educational challenges are designed for you to just follow along with me um, have fun, maybe, and get familiar with all the tools and techniques that are useful in each category. So these educational challenges are not worth points. So if you're part of the quote unquote big leagues, you don't need to waste your time on them. But for those beginner teams that do complete all of the educational challenges, we have a very small, very special surprise for you uh, to commemorate your learning. So um, do try to catch them all, so to speak, uh, the flags that is and uh, have fun with us. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's dive into it. This is actually, so it's one piece of software that contains two flags. And it's kind of split across two challenges. There's Hackslab Flag Leak and there's Hackslab Endgame Pwn. Um, you're gonna wanna do Endgame Pwn or follow along with basically that part of the tutorial um, in order to get the flag that you will turn in for points. Uh, you're not going to want to turn in these flags here that are from last year. Um, this will be different than the flag that you'll get by solving it this year. So um, do follow along and, and do it yourself and, and you'll get credit for it. Um, but as you can see here, um, we have the original prompt. We have uh, an attachment provided as well to aid you. So as, as a solver of this challenge, you get access to jail.py here. Um, the original specification, again, the old flag, don't turn it in, and uh, some write-ups so that if you, you know, if my explanation is not thorough enough, there are lots of different ways of looking at it and ways that people have looked at it. Thank you so much, by the way, anyone that does write-ups, you are awesome. So it's telling me that um, it's a math as a service, uh, apparently that's a registered trademark uh, calculator with advanced functionality. So uh, for this challenge, we need to submit flag one. And then for the second challenge, we'll need to submit flag two. Um, specifically, there's a file flag one.txt. So we're going to go ahead and connect um, with Netcat, which you can do on any platform. I happen to be on Windows. Um, so rather than, you know, I, I could pop open a terminal here, but rather than using Netcat through PowerShell, I'm, I'm going to open my Windows subsystem for Linux uh, tab open so I can use netcat natively or I guess virtually I should say. Um, this is my domain. It's different than the you know hackslab.sdctf domain um, because uh, I currently am not using the production domain. So you, your netcat will look different but um, the service you connect to will be the same. So here we are. Um, it says hackslab and it gives us the, the Python REPL. Um, and I, I do mean the Python REPL. I mean if I open up a tab and just run Python locally, I'm basically going to get the same prompt. Um, and I can do things like one plus one. Well, just like that, um, I can do one plus one here. And it's a calculator, only it's running on some machine somewhere, right? Uh, I can do all kinds of things. Uh, five, you know, basic arithmetic does work. But again, what we want is to read the file um, flag one dot text. So the way that you would do that normally with Python, right? You do like, I think, import OS. Um, I mean, th this is one way to do it, right? You could just pop a shell. You could do like, you know, os.system and then pass in like sh or whatever. Um, but in this case, it's gonna say it's not permitted. So there, there's a little bit more to this jail, uh, this jail than just arbitrarily popping open a shell and, and executing arbitrary commands. There, there are some restrictions here. Um, on what we can and cannot do. And I think you'll find if you try to open flag dot, uh, flag one.txt directly, you'll run into those restrictions. So let's go ahead and actually look at the source code here. We do see um, quite a bit of stuff. The, the audit hook here is what's preventing us from doing stuff, right? There's this set of allowed events. Um, and so we can we can take an input, we can exec and compile. It's saying that this is what is required for the math REPL. Um, but other than that, you, you can't do anything else. You'll get this operation not permitted error. So when we're trying to do, you know, a, the syscall to open shell, um, you're gonna run in this audit 
hook is going to see that that's not an allowed event and, and reject it. We register that audit hook down here um, with this sys.addAuditHook function. Uh, you, you can learn more about this. I mean, it's not hard to do like add audit hook or whatever. Just Google that and you can you can see the the different events that they support. So these are the events that are allowed for us. Um, you know, there's all this documentation exists if, if you want to read more on the dirty details of this. But, you know, maybe we would have to bypass this if the flag was on the disk. But fortunately, um, we also see that there appears to be some kind of flag one just floating here in, in scope for us, right? There's a flag one variable, actually. So we would like to try and maybe... Um, uh, try and read this flag one and you can see here that um you know flag one is provided into the scope of the code that you provide in the REPL that is then executed so we do have access to this flag one variable um so so i mean let's actually just go back to the terminal and i'll, I'll make my font a little bigger here um if i do flag one you know i i actually do get an object but uh, again it's not a string if it was just a string this would be easy but Unfortunately, it's wrapped in this weird proprietary flag holder object of some kind. Um, and it's not obvious what's inside of that object or how we would go about discovering that. Um, but if I look at the source code also, I'll see that this proprietary get flag stuff is is obscured to me. It's not part of jail.py. It's part of proprietary.py, which which we aren't given. So I'm well, I could, you know, now go and look at that. Um, for the purposes of solving this challenge, you would not be given it. Um, so you would not know how it works. Um, and it's true, I, I have no clue how it works. So um, to, to kind of help us discover more about this mysterious flag one object, um, there are some Python built-ins that can be used to discover attributes of objects. The main one I'm thinking of is dir. If you run dir without an argument, it'll tell you all the things that are in scope, right? You've got your built-ins, which are always there, flag one, which we saw, and OS, because I didn't import OS, but it, I can't do anything with it, so there's no point. Um, I could do dir flag one, though, to see the attributes of flag one, and we get all these. A lot of these, especially the ones with the double underscores, are kind of always there, um, but this one here, um, which is like dash flag one dash is unusual that that is um not typical that stands out to me so i might try to access that now if i wanted to access that unfortunately i'm going to run into a problem because if i do dash flag one dash um that's invalid syntax you can't have hyphens when you're accessing an attribute um you can have underscores so like if i want to access like one of these other ones i could i could do so but um the hyphens cause problems Fortunately, there's another Python built-in, uh, and you don't just have to know about this stuff, right? You can, um, like, Google it, I guess, to kind of help you discover it. So, like, Python object get attribute. Oh, and I, I Google that, and it, you know, there's a Stack Overflow post, and it says that there's this function, this built-in called get atcher, and I can actually look up get adder and pull up some, uh, some off-brand documentation for it. Maybe maybe the official one would work here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Get adder. Um, return the value of the named attribute of object, yada, yada. So you pass in the object and then the, a string representing the name. So this lets us bypass the, the syntax issue there. I could do get adder and do flag one. The attribute I want to retrieve is dash flag uh, one, and then I can hit enter, but unfortunately it just says redacted. Um, so that's unfortunate. Uh, I mean, so, so we don't have access to proprietary here, so we don't know exactly how this works behind the scenes. Um, it could be that because Python provides a lot of functionality for like overriding default behavior. So for example, if you're, you're going to print something, you can override it by, um, implementing this like str function or whatever. So it's maybe, it might actually be there. You know, we, we can't assume that it's not there just from this. It could be some kind of middleware logic that's getting in the way of us reading it. Um, 
but I, I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to be a string, right? Um, we can try one of these other attributes. One that might be interesting is uh, dict, since um, if flag one is an attribute, it, it might be under, uh, if flag one is an attribute that's been added to this object, um, it might be under uh, dict, which actually I don't need to use get attribute to access. I can do flag one dot underscore dict. And then I can see that, yes, this flag one is defined, um, but it's redacted. So I run into a similar issue. Um, for some reason, I can't display this string. So to try and display it anyways, um, there's a lot of different things you can try um, to bypass maybe what might be in theoretically overridden behavior. Um, in this case, we can try indexing into the string, right? We, we can try calling like slice on it and all this other stuff. Um, the easiest way to just try and index into it, though, is to just treat it like an array, you know, it just what's the first character is what this means in Python. Uh, when we do that, we don't get R, which we would if the string was actually redacted. Instead, we get S, which maybe leads me to believe that this is... We, our, our hypothesis was correct. There's some kind of proprietary overloaded behavior of this um, string that we can uh, get around by uh, printing the characters. Now, we, we can continue enumerating like this, you know, SD. Now we're pretty pretty confident that this is the flag, but, um, you know, if we want to print the whole thing very quickly, um, Python does provide uh, a syntax for fetching, like, a range of inputs, right? So you can do, like, 0, colon, 1 to get the first two characters, or you could just do colon with no start or beginning, and that will just fetch the whole thing. But it'll do so kind of like through this index way of thinking things. So it'll fetch all the characters individually and then return them, which essentially would just print the flag because that that allows us to access the real characters. So this just dumps the flag. This is the first flag. We did it. Congrats. Um, again, don't turn this into anything. And you, you can see it says... Um, uh, get adder reads everything is what the flag says, or at least my flag says, um, referencing this, this get adder function that we use to actually read this. At this point, I feel comfortable going into proprietary.py and looking at the, the source code here, um, which we wouldn't normally have access to. Um, but we, we do see that it, it reads this string from the file and then it overrides this, uh, this str function I was talking about, as well as this a repr function to kind of return redacted in most cases, but we we can still you know index into it to to get the final value, um, like I demonstrated. And, and there's a few other ways to get around those overrides, but um, that was kind of the basics. So we did the first part of this, um, but th but this flag is not going to be useful to you. Um, you're going to want the second flag, which I am now going to walk through, uh, which will require. Um, overwriting the audit hooks. So the prompt here is, is that it's the same Python script and same port and host and all that kind of stuff, same software. But now you need to actually read a file on the disk called flag2.txt. Like there's no way around it. You have to do it. Um, and so you, you have to somehow bypass this audit hook uh, that was described before. So there is, there is a way. There is a way to do this. Um, Basically, we want to look at this audit hook function and try to find a way to modify its behavior. Um, we see here that uh, allowed events is a set of strings, and then we just check to see if the event in question, which is going to be one of these in this table here, there's a lot, there's a lot of different audit events, um, is one of the allowed ones. Now, none of these are going to let us read the file. So unfortunately, uh, we will need to bypass this somehow. Um, but when looking for an opportunity to override the behavior of audit hook, audit hook is pretty self-contained. The only um, piece of code that's called in here really, or the only external function really is, is set here, right? The, the set is called before anything else happens. Um, so, I mean, let's set is just under built in, I think. So we, we can just go into here and click on set and it says returns a new set object optionally with elements taken from iterable, yada, yada. So it's, it's just a set that'll, it's a, it's a construct that allows you to do this like 
is this thing in this thing um, very easily and succinctly. But this, at the end of the day, is just a function, right? Um, what is this function? It's technically defined on the, the built-ins, right? It's part of that built-in uh, construct that we got here that's, that is within our scope. So technically, we have access to this set function. Um, and what is beautiful about that is we can actually just override its behavior. Um, you can override the built-ins in Python. Um, there's no restriction because you, you know how in Python, there's no such thing as like a um, an immutable variable like by default. So everything is settable and re-editable. It's bad practice. You shouldn't do it. Um, but you, you can, I mean, you can look this up. Python override uh, built-in function, you know, and you could probably find an example on Stack Overflow uh, where you can, um, you know, basically you import the built-in and then you just... Uh, oh, wait, no, no, this, this, this question is different. Ignore what I said. Okay. But you can do it is the point. So let's, let's define a new one. Let's, let's just jump right in. So we have this built ins object, which is in scope, right? Um, oh, I think I might've screwed up. There we go. Let's jump back in. So we have this built ins object, which is in scope. Uh, we want to override the set function. Um, now what to override it to? We have to be a little careful with this because it still needs to be a function. If we just define it to be, you know, some events, then that's not quite what we want. Um, we want it to still be a function, but we want it to be a function that returns something different. Uh, right now it will return this set, but we want it to return, um, a new syscall as well. Uh, particularly os.system, right, is going to let us do pretty much anything we want. And we can see here that, yeah, that's that's just the os.system um, audit event. So if we can just somehow add os.system to this set, then we'll have access to that call. Um, unfortunately, in order to do that, um, again, this needs to be a function. I'm going to use Python Lambda syntax, because I do need to be kind of brief here. So I'm just going to do like Lambda um, or Lambda. Uh, the parameter coming in is going to be like, I don't know, X or whatever. And then what it's going to return is just a new set. And we have to be careful because we still want to return all the stuff that's here. Otherwise, uh, our REPL will start stop working, right? We need these in order for the REPL to work. So we're going to return all of the same stuff. The only difference is that we're also going to return um, the new event that we want to allow, which is uh, os.system. And there we go. We just overrode the built-in set. We monkey, we monkey patched it to be a new function that no matter what input you give it, x, it, that's just completely disregarded. And instead, it returns this set, which includes os.system. So let's try it out. Let's try importing os and do os.system. And then sh is what we want, right? And now you might be wondering, well, okay, did it work? Let's try ls. Yes, it did work. We now have popped a shell on this. So that's beautiful. We now uh, were able to bypass the audit hook and we can see all kinds of stuff. The thing that might be interesting is flag one, you know, right? Flag one.txt is a real file and it's the same flag we got before. But now we can do better. Now we can actually retrieve flag two as well. Uh, and it very rightfully points out that audit hooks are indeed not sandboxes. So now with this, uh, I can turn this in for credit. Again, you'll get a different flag, but um, go ahead and do everything I did and get that flag and turn in and get your well-earned points. Um, thank you so much for following along and I'll go ahead and call it here, but have fun with the rest of the CTF. See you later.